Recently, the rapper Corday controversially argued that the streamer Kai Sinat is the new 106 in Park. In the 2000s, hip-hop fans religiously tuned into the iconic music TV show 106 in Park, and Corday argued that the same movement is happening today with Kai Sinat's Twitch streams. The tweet was laughed at by many people, but as I'll get into, there are a lot of surprising similarities. 106 in Park was a TV show that first aired in the year 2000 when BET decided that they were going to fill a huge void missing from TV schedules. At the time, kids after school would switch their TV sets onto MTV and watch Total Request Live or TRL, which gave a countdown of the charts and showcased the latest music videos. With 106 in Park, BET took the format of Total Request Live but dug a bit deeper into hip-hop and R&B music. While Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Nelly were mainstays on TRL, BET could also shine the spotlight on slightly less popular artists such as Ja Rule, Ashanti, and Genuine, among many others. The TV show was named after its original location, East 106th Street and Park Avenue. One of the many teenagers inspired by this show was Garrett Kennedy, who wrote for the LA Times, as a black teenager with an affinity for pop music but raised on R&B and hip-hop, I considered BET's 106 in Park essential viewing. He said that it scratched beneath the surface of just doling out popular music videos. It offered something deeper for myself and teenagers like me across the country. This was the only show where the audience looked just like me and kids I knew and was packed with the rising R&B and hip-hop talents I crushed on, as well as the stars who already mattered to me. The show was hosted by AJ Calloway and Free, and showcased music videos, interviews, and performances. Part of its appeal was that it was live, meaning that anything could happen. One of its most iconic segments was known as Freestyle Fridays, which gave up-and-coming rappers the opportunity to battle each other. And one of the most iconic rappers to appear on this was Blind Fury, who was literally visually impaired and could rap incredibly well. The show has also been seen as an important launching pad for Sierra and Drake. 106 and Park cultivated a communal aspect of the show, Strangely enough, the program first aired on September 11, 2000, so when they were supposed to celebrate their one-year anniversary, they had to try to make sense of what was happening in New York City and the wider world. Derek said, 106 in Park is where I turned to grieve after Aaliyah's death. Her final interview was on that couch days before the 2001 plane crash that claimed her, and a month later images of the attacks of September 11, 2001 would flash on the network on what was the show's one-year anniversary. 106 was how I was plugged into the world. The duo of AJ Calloway and Free ended in 2005, and Jalissa and Big Tigger stepped in as presenters for a year. Terrence J and Roxy hosted it from 2006 to 2012, and during its final years, the show was hosted by Bow Wow and The Search, followed by Bow Wow and Kesha Shantae. While 106 and Park was essential viewing in the 2000s, this was no longer the case in the 2010s. With the commonplace of the internet, you could watch the latest music video for your favorite rapper elsewhere. The internet also meant that, generally speaking, kids were watching less and less live TV. In the latter years, a rather mean-spirited joke about Blue Ivy, the daughter of Jay-Z and Beyonce, attracted a lot of negative publicity and was one of the final nails in the coffin. With all that being said, 14 years is a pretty impressive run for any TV show. When 106 and Park first aired in September 2000, Kai Sinat wasn't even alive was born a few months later. So when he was a teenager, he would have only witnessed the years when 106 and Park was past its peak. He was part of a generation that was no longer looking at TV screens, but watching videos on YouTube. He was so inspired by the YouTube prankster Roman Atwood that he decided to make some prank videos of his own. Though participating in YouTube trends, his channel continued to grow and in 2021, he switched over to Twitch. By 2023, his figures have become insane. 7.5 million YouTube subs and 6.4 million Twitch followers. It was the influence that sparked the rapper Corday to compare his streams with 106 and Park. Corday tweeted, Kai Sinat streamed the new 106 and Park, and I say that as a huge compliment, by the way. Kai Sinat stream is like our generation 106 and Park. All these kids after school go watch a stream the same way we used to for 106 and Park. Every artist go there when they album drop, etc., etc. Just a random thought. The first analogy you can make between Kai Sinat and 106 in Park is that both of them were filling a void. In an interview with Complex, Speedy Mormon asked Sinat, Now it seems like with the Twitch and streaming community, it doesn't necessarily look like us. I didn't know any of the black streamers prior, so do you feel like you're kind of helping lead the charge in a certain way? To this question, Kai responds, 
There's a couple of black streamers. They just aren't as big as the white streamers. With me personally, I was bringing a crazy light to the culture by being on the platform and dominating and doing everything I had to do. Corday is also correct that like 106 and Park, Ty is attracting the biggest rappers on his streams. In the 2000s, 106 and Park featured the most prominent artists of the time with names such as Kanye, 50, Lil Wayne, and even Beyonce who's not a rapper, all appearing on the show. In the same vein, Kai has attracted guests who are also at the higher end of hip-hop in the 2020s. Kai Sinat has had popular streams with Ice Spice, Lil Baby, Offset, and countless others. Interestingly, when 21 Savage was promoting his album with Drake, Her Loss, he spent three and a half hours talking to him. Lil Yachty also spent over four hours in his company. Other than maybe Drink Champs, it's hard to think of an online hip-hop outlet that could get the biggest rappers to sit down with them for that length of time. And Kai's trying to do away with the traditional interview and create the vibe of just two people hanging out, rather than the somewhat transactional relationships between artists and traditional media outlets. Garrett Kennedy for the LA Times said 106 and Park's original host, AJ Calloway and Free, were fresh, edgy, and embodied in effortless cool, and their passion for the music showed. And arguably, the same could be said about Kai Sinat today. And just like 106 and Park, Kai's influential and to an almost insane degree. In August 2023, he announced a console giveaway in New York and was unaware of the power that he had. Thousands of people rampaged through Union Square and a riot ensued. One of the things that you can't take away from Kai Sinat is that he's had a cultural impact. For better or worse, him and his friends have introduced the phrase Riz into everyday conversation, as well as other terms like glazing. So let me define it for you. Hmm. Riz is when, like, you talking to a girl, mm -hmm. right? And at first, shit is not going your way. Mm -hmm. You spit game to where like you're risen, <laughs> your 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 riz is just like you're risen them up. However, in terms of fans, it's difficult to make a like for like comparison between Kai Sinai and 106 and Park. According to Streamhatchet.com, 90% of his audience are between the ages of 20 to 29 and are young adults. Corday made the analogy of kids coming home from school and turning into Kai. But this data suggests that it's college students and young adults who are his core fan base, which seems very inaccurate compared to the number of people that showed up to his giveaway. So the likelihood is we may not see the actual real age, but it's people that are pretty young, teenagers. And even if his audience is mainly people in their late teens, this is still an audience that shapes and influences culture. Things get even more interesting when you look at the gender divide. Based on the figures, Kai's audience on Twitch is 90% male, which is a predominantly male platform, viewers-wise regardless. And it's difficult to find the exact demographics of 106 and Park, but their initial target demographic was teenage girls. BET's vice president of music programming, Stephen Hill, said, One of the things that fueled 106 and Park was the absolute dearth of urban artists that 14 to 16-year-old girls could lose their minds over. It was just one of those obvious holes. You've got credible hip-hop, you've got adult hip-hop, you don't have that new edition group. 106 and Park was intended to be the perfect vehicle. Another huge difference is that Kai Sinat's not really a tastemaker like 106 and Park. There's nothing as of yet like Freestyle Fridays where up and coming rappers can use his platform to come up. Nor is this expected of him either. He's a rap fan whose tastes are not much different from the average hip hop fan. No Jumper at one point was the go to platform for underground artists looking to break through. There are, of course, limitations to the streaming model. Kai Sinat streaming from his bedroom is not going to have the same production value as a TV network, which I think is what caters to its appeal. And unlike 106 and Park, there's no crowd in the background, and instead, the live audience is the comment section with either W's or L's spamming, which doesn't have the same energy, but it does have that same immediate touch. On the other side of that, streaming allows Kai to have interviews for an amount of time that wouldn't be feasible on broadcast television, which has its advantages as well. But with Kai Sinat and 106 and Park, you can essentially compare apples and oranges. And of course, people have made the claim that Corday only said this so Kai would invite him onto a stream, but it did spark an interesting conversation. Each generation will have its thing, which made them feel connected to what was going on with their generation and their culture. The parents of those who watch 106 and Park would have felt the same about the TV series Soul Train in the 70s. And the current generation coming up will have streamers, podcasters, influencers, and rappers that they can call their own too. Make sure to subscribe for more.